Good morning. Uh, this is Bishop Bob Coulter with uh, TMCI, and I have the privilege of having uh, Stash Kompento with us this morning. Uh, he is a TMCI missionary in Russia. Uh, Stash, it's great to have you with us. It's actually good evening here in Russia. Uh, praise God. Yes. Stash, before we talk about your ministry, uh, why don't you tell us how long you've been in Russia and what uh, what prompted you to go to Russia? Well, I was born and raised in Russia, first of all. Uh, and although in slightly different area than we serve now, I was raised uh, in the southern parts of Russia. And then in Bible college, the Lord called us to a ministry to transfer uh, into another area, more national republic called Bashkoristan. It's still within Russian borders, but it's semi-autonomous area, very similar to uh, US tribes, Indian tribes. Uh, and we have been here uh, ministering for about 20 years. We came here in 2000, right after Bible college. Praise God, wow. Well, I obviously did not know that you were born in Russia. Uh, I don't know why, but I thought you were uh, a bond or were in the United States for a while. So, uh, but it's, you know, you, we all learn something new every day and that's the good news. So, Stash, why don't you tell us about your ministry, what's going on, what you're doing now in that area of Russia? Uh, we live, as I said, in a semi-autonomous area, and we have significant Muslim population here, so our ministry is uh, directed toward reaching uh, Muslim Muslims. And uh, uh, there are two major ethnicities that live here, Bashkirs and Tatars. And, uh, but both of them are Muslims. And there are some Russians that live in this area too. And Bashkirs are considered non-reached uh, people's group for the gospel. So they don't have the whole Bible translated into their language. They don't have established church that uh, have worship in, um, in, in their own language, in Bashki language. Uh, those are all our goals, to establish national church, to complete the translation of the Bible into their language, and to promote a uh, house church uh, model of uh, discipleship. That's what we're doing here in a couple of words. Okay, well, good. So how, how is your ministry affecting the region that you're in now? Uh, well, when we first came here, uh, we were some sort of pioneers 20 years ago, and with that, we are coming to establish traditional church with a choir and its own building, but the more we were here in the field, the more Lord was showing us that uh, that might not be the case in this area because of uh, strong opposition on one side, Muslim culture, on the other side, uh, Russian government, uh, which don't like um, uh, evangelical Christians, uh, although it's protective of Russian Protestant church, um, Orthodox church, but they're not in favor of um, um, Protestant churches or missionaries or uh, Christians like that. Mm. So um, when we first came here on the ground, uh, very few Christians were here and typical church was 15 to 20 people. And only one church had its own building here in uh, Ufa, which is the capital of this area, capital city. Uh, and we just started the movement of house churches and we started to do uh, what we call workshops twice a year. And we started to cast the vision among 
leaders and preachers here in this area, teaching them Bible principles, how to establish a church in your own house. And that was something revolutionary and new, but it worked. And now we see more and more people warming up to this idea and more and more churches like that are emerging here in this area. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I understand your wife, Lilia, and, uh, helps you too, and you have some children. Why don't you share a little bit about them? Uh, I came to Ulfa 20 years ago, single, of course. And I met my wife here in our church. Her name is Lilia. Uh, she was one of the fir first attenders, actually, in our church, and she came from a Muslim background. So we had our difficulties too. We couldn't get married for a few years because uh, they parents, that was big struck in this culture when someone uh, of Muslim background marry a uh, Russian who is a pastor. Uh, that was way too much for them. But we prayed and Finally, we got married and uh, we have two kids, wonderful kids. One is Timothy and a girl, uh, daughter named Christina. Uh, Timothy is 10 and Christina is four. Wow, praise God. Well, uh, what, uh, what uh, is the uh, most needed thing in the area that you're ministering in Russia today? Well, we take prayer seriously. And we strongly believe that if uh, people of God pray, then the God moves. And that's what we need first of all. And we have experienced the power of prayer in our ministry numerous times through, throughout all those years, 20 years. Uh, and that's our first answer. We need just more and more prayer, more and more Christians involved uh, on uh, different countries and continents, just supporting this area, people for the prayer for people of uh, Bashkortostan. Okay, praise God. Listen, uh, what, what, uh, what is uh, your plans for this coming year? Do you have any special events or... A special uh, projects at this time? Uh, we're still not sure if we're coming this summer to serve in the US uh, because of all those uh, lockdowns, and passports. That's kind of still look complicated this summer, but we definitely prepare to lead a family camp here in the mountains. Uh, that's a highlight of the year for us in our ministry uh, when people from different churches come together and just spend a few days uh, seeking God's will in the mountains. We live in tents um, by the river. We do rafting, we do some other sport activities and we do outreach in the neighboring villages. Uh, again, mostly uh, Muslim villages. Uh, many of people who live in those villages, they don't speak even Russian. Uh, and that's what is our ma next major uh, project. And it will be this year in July 25th through 30. Okay, very good. Well, it's a pleasure to find out more about your ministry and what's happening in Russia. Uh, let me just have a word of prayer for you at this time. Father, we thank you, Vastash and his family. We thank you for what you're doing through them. Father, I ask you to continue to give him favor wherever he walks. That, Father, that you will expand his ministry. Father, we thank you that your word is getting out through him and through his, his uh, uh, small groups and Father, that as we think about this upcoming uh, meeting in July, Father, we ask you bless it. Father, bring people to uh, that meeting that uh, they can be ministered to, that they can be uh, set free. And Father, that they will encourage each other in you. 
So, Father, we thank you what you're going to be doing for us, staff, and this family. And I thank you what you're doing through them. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Stash, it's been a great Amen. time to be with you. And we just continue to pray God's blessing over you. And yes, we pray for you every day. You have a blessed day. Thank you, Bishop Bob. Thanks so much for watching TMCI TV. If you found any benefit in this episode, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date with our future videos. If you are interested in planning a church, starting a ministry, or looking for 501c3 tax exemption status for your existing church or ministry, TMCI can help. Click the link in the description below for more information. We look forward to hearing from you soon. God bless.